Hello everybody! Welcome to 2019 and thank you for revisiting my channel. Today I have a situation. This client came in with her extension installation and she was well over her recommended install time. Everybody knows that I give people up to 12 weeks. This lady left her extensions in for much longer than three months. I must say it was going on like four, four and a half. So we removed her extensions and I do see that her scalp is doing what it does. She has seborrheic dermatitis, which is, if you guys remember from the other videos, the oily type of dandruff. It's when your scalp produces too much sebum. So here, right before I start unraveling the braids, I like to separate the rows. If you can think about it, three months worth of hair growth is since your hair grows in a circular pattern out of your scalp, it'll wind up around some of the braids sometimes. So if you just start taking hair down, then you run into a lot more tangling issues. So if you try to separate it before you take it down, it'll be a lot easier to take down. Her scalp does have some buildup, but this isn't buildup like the other ladies. This isn't like layers and layers and layers of buildup. This I would say is maybe like two weeks post shampoo. So being that she does shampoo her hair regularly, this is a product of improper rinsing. Not only rinsing, but not allowing your real hair to dry thoroughly before the next time you wet it down. <laughs> So when the hair does not have a chance to dry completely, you end up with something that smells kind of like, um, hold on for a second. Okay, so it kind of smells like mildew. You know, um, right here it's white. You can see where it's white. And it's wet when I was taking it down or moist. And now since it's been exposed to the air, it's having a chance to dry up on me. And it's a little bit difficult now to comb through because it's really gummy. Being this close up on it, I can smell it faintly. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't that bad. I didn't think it was that bad. I thought I was smelling it and I was like, surely I know she can smell it, but she didn't say anything. So I didn't say anything. It wasn't that big of a deal. But when I made it to the break room, my coworker, she said, uh, oh man, Carla, she said, as soon as I saw her hair was white when you took her extensions down, I already knew it was going to smell awful in here. And I was like, you can smell that? And she said, yes. She said her client walked through the door and was like, oh my God, I didn't think it was that bad. And I didn't want to, you know, embarrass her. So I just went ahead and did a detox on her. The detox that I used, well, detox slash deodorizer. At the shampoo bowl, we're going to shampoo her hair twice with a really good purifying shampoo. Towel dry her hair really good. And that's when I'm going to prepare the mixture of. We're going to start with about five cups of water. Into the five cups of water, I'm going to pour about two cups of baking soda into that. And then I'm going to swish it around really good. We're going to take that to the shampoo area where she's already laying back. And then from there, I'm going to add about three cups of apple cider vinegar to the mixture. And it's not Bragg's. I didn't use Bragg's. I don't use Bragg's. I just feel like it's too expensive and you don't really need it. You can just use any kind of budget brand apple cider vinegar. And it's going to start to bubble. And when it starts to bubble, Bubble, that's when you're gonna start like cupping it over her hair as it's clean and you're gonna do that a couple of times and of course it's gonna empty back out into the basin that you put in the bowl and then you're gonna just keep going over after I do that I put a processing cap on her and I secure her edges with uh, cotton so it doesn't run down her face and I'll sit her up or I'll simply just allow her to remain in a reclined position so that the the lengths of her hair will be as saturated in the mixture as possible now what's going on with the mixture I've got a few more minutes in this video and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about pH and why it's important to make sure that when you're putting mixtures like that onto the hair you know why you're doing it and what you're doing it for and how you can possibly mess up your hair really bad mixing stuff putting stuff on your scalp and on your hair like that so I'll get right back with you in just a minute enjoy the video
The reason I want to talk to you about pH is because the baking soda and the apple cider vinegar have, their pHs are really different. The pH of the baking soda is going to be somewhere around 9. And a lot of relaxers are around 9 on the pH scale. And 9 will open up your hair shaft. The apple cider vinegar is more like a 3 on the pH scale. And it acts more like it closes the hair shaft. So you have your acid and your base. One opens, one closes. You're dealing with chemicals. That's what normally you're dealing with products with a different pH. Normal hair lives between 4.5 and 5.5 on the pH scale. So whenever you're going to put an acid or a base on the hair, you have to do something that's going to bring it back down to be a 4.5 or a 5.5. Sometimes when people mix stuff together and then they put it on the hair shaft, they'll take it up too high and they won't bring it back down. They'll take it down too far and they won't bring it back. Up. So that's when you run into all kind of different texture related problems. Now this scratch video is going to be pretty much a scratch only video. I'm not going to go into shampoo and I'm not going to go into styling. I just wanted to show you what could happen. Some of the pictures that I see circulating on social media, they that this person is doing. I don't I don't know what kind of backstory they have, but sometimes this is what can lead up to that. Normally this doesn't happen. Like I said, I think I've seen this maybe twice. I've been a stylist for 20 years. I've seen it in little girls where they have their hair in ponytails I and mean, their moms don't really comb their ponytails out. They may spray the outside of the ponytail with water and brush it up and put the, the band back around and the little girl by the time it, they actually take the whole ponytail down and style the whole hair, it's matted or it has like a, that, that, that smell to it also. Sometimes in locks, you can smell it. It's just, it's just a, a, a very distinctive odor. And on most of my videos, you guys ask me what it smells like. And normally it doesn't smell like anything. But I felt like I should make this video because it finally smelled like something. So thank you for tuning in. And please like and comment and share my videos. Let me know how much you love them. Have a wonderful day.